In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Good evening, brothers and sisters. We come on this most sacred night to which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life. The church recalls a calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating, we shall have sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times belonging to him and all ages, to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord protect us. Amen. And may the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts.
Christ our light. Christ our light. Thanks be to Christ our light. Thanks be to
exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound the loud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy thought that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour 
When Christ rose from the underworld, this is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be bound still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated and extinguish your candles.
reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God then separated the light from the darkness. God saw how good the light was. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, 
and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it, to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you, lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In that night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus. The Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations, obtaining the privilege of Israel by merits of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your spirit through Christ our Lord. Así habla el Señor, vengan a tomar agua a todos los sedientos y el que no tenga dinero, venga también. Coman gratuitamente su ración de trigo y sin pagar, tomen vino y leche. ¿Por qué gastan dinero en algo que no alimenta y sus ganancias en algo que no sacia? Háganme caso y comerán buena comida, se deleitarán con sabrosos manjares. Presten atención y vengan a mí, escuchen bien y vivirán. Yo haré con ustedes una alianza eterna. Obra de mi inquebrantable amor a David, yo lo he puesto como testigo para los pueblos, jefe y soberano de naciones. Tú llamarás a una nación que no conocías y una nación que no te conocía correrá hacia ti a causa del Señor tu Dios y por el Santo de Israel que te glorifica. Busquen al Señor mientras se deja encontrar, llámenlo mientras está cerca, que el malvado abandone su camino y el hombre perverso sus pensamientos. Que vuelva al Señor y Él le tendrá compasión a nuestro Dios que es generoso en perdonar, porque los pensamientos de ustedes no son los míos, ni los caminos de ustedes son mis caminos, oráculo del Señor. Como el cielo se alza por encima de la tierra, así sobrepasan, sobrepasan mis caminos y mis pensamientos a los caminos y a los pensamientos de ustedes. Así como la lluvia y la nieve descienden del cielo y no vuelven a él sin haber empapado la tierra, sin haberla fecundado y hecho germinar, para que dé la semilla al sembrador y el pan al que come, así sucede con la palabra que sale de mi boca. Ella no vuelve a mí estéril, sino que realiza todo lo que yo quiero y cumple la misión que yo le encomendé. The Word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld, you have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs calls it and it obeys him trembling before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Czytanie z Księgi Poroka Ezechiela. Pan skierował do mnie te słowa. Synu człowiecy, kiedy dom Izraela mieszkał w swojej ziemi, wówczas splugowali ją swym postępowaniem, swymi czyniami. Wtedy wylałem na nich swe oburzenie z powodu krwi, którą w kraju przelali i z powodu bosków, którymi go splugowali. I rozprosyłem ich pomiędzy pogańskie ludy i rozsypali się po krajach. Osądziłem ich według postępowania i czynów. W ten sposób przyszli do ludów pogańskich i dokąd przybyli, bezcześcili święte imię moje, podczas gdy mówiono o nich, to jest lud Pana. Musieli się oni wyprowadzić ze swego kraju. Wtedy zatroszyłem się o święte me imię, które oni, Izraelici, zbezcześcili wśród ludów pogańskich, do których przybyli. Dlatego mów do domu Izraela, tak mówi Pan Bóg. Nie z waszego powodu to czynię domu Izraela, ale dla świętego imienia mojego, które zbezcześciliście wśród ludów pogańskich, do których przyszliście. Chcę uświęcić wielkie imię moje, które zbezczeszczone jest pośród ludów, zbezczeszczone przez was, pośród nich i poznają ludy, że ja jestem Pan, mówi Pan Bóg, gdy okażę się świętym względem was przed ich ocami. Zabiorę was spośród ludów, zbiorę was ze wszystkich krajów, i przyprowadzę was powrotem do waszego kraju. Pokropię was czystą wodą, abyście się stali czystymi. I oczyszczę was od wszelkiej zmazy i od wszystkich waszych bosków. I dam wam serce nowe. I ducha nowego tknę do waszego wnętrza. Odbiorę wam serce kamienne. A dam wam serce z ciała. Ducha mojego Chcę tknąć w was i sprawić, byście żyli według mych nakazów i przestrzegali przekazań i według nich postępowali. Wtedy będziecie mieszkać w kraju, który dałem waszym środkom i będziecie moim ludem, a ja będę waszym Bogiem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O oh God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you unto 
divided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. A warm welcome to all of you here tonight, especially some of our visitors from out of town, but also family members who are here with the neo, uh, uh, the neo catechumens, or the that is the the new catechumens who will be baptized, and also the candidates who uh, will be confirmed. And it's a pleasure to to be together uh, on this Easter vigil. Scripture scholars have pointed out that the Gospels are a particular kind of literature. Yes, it's true, they give us an account of the life of Jesus, but they're, they're more than just a biography. And they give us a rundown of the many ways, the places that Jesus went, but it's not a travelogue either. But rather, the Gospels are inspired in a way that they're written so that as they are proclaimed, what happened in the past is now brought to the present. They act in many ways in the Gospels as moments in which we are brought into the very moment in which the events of Christ took place so that they have the power to transform our lives now. They're like little time bombs that go off in our area with an explosive power to give meaning to our lives. And so let's take a close look at this gospel text that we have from John. We hear, first of all, of Mary Magdalene coming in the darkness. And we're told that it's the first day of the week. It is reminiscent of what we heard in tonight's first reading from Genesis. The first day of the week when it was still dark and a great void covered the land. God created the world. The message is clear. What took place in the resurrection and what takes place now is a moment of a new creation. This is a new day, the first day of the new creation. And so it's an opportunity for us to see that what has been passed is prologue. That what is past is relative. All the mistakes that we made in life, the ways in which we have failed others or disappointed ourselves, or the ways in which we have been hurt, now are past. There's a new day 
that the Lord is giving us. A new horizon. Some weeks ago, I was with the Holy Father and was telling him about the work that we're doing here with our prisons. And he gave a message to the prisoners in a little video clip that will be played for them on the, these Easter days, in which he says to them, always look for a new horizon. No matter what has happened in your life, there's a new horizon. That's what Easter is about. It's reminding us that our faith allows us to move forward into the future with this new horizon. And this new horizon also includes something else that we hear in this reading from John. There is no dead body. The tomb is empty. Death is not part of this new creation as an absolute. Death too, just like the past, is relativized. It does not have that hold on us that creates fear in us, that drives us to maybe a life of materialism where we think that we have to gather all sorts of things in life in order to make us feel important or when we have a tendency to perfectionism in which we're less likely to forgive others imperfections or even worse yet, forgives ourselves when we are imperfect. But rather, it is a relativizing of death to the point that we can love sacrificially and not count the cost and give generously and show compassion even though it will cost us something because we have a life that is for all eternity. It is not a zero-sum game to be generous in this new day of creation because we have eternal life. There is no end point to our existence. Death is not the period at the end of the sentence. And so as we come here this night, it's an opportunity once again to let this gospel have that explosive power to remind us of who we are. That we are the people who claim to live in a new creation where there is the past that's relativized and death has no power or hold over us. But there's even more. Because as we have expressed through the lighting of this Easter candle and as we allow that flame to leap from one person to another, we also realize that we need to keep this faith burning in our lives and in our communities because the darkness does cover the earth and there is always the threat that we will forget that we are living in a new creation. That's why coming to the Eucharist on a weekly basis is so important. It is that way in which we light the candle of one another again by letting each other know that we are the people who believe that Christ rose from the dead. But it's also an opportunity as we go forth from this community to be a light to the world, to shine the light in the darkness of poverty, of prejudice, in which newcomers to our country as immigrants are shunned and we care for them because we see that Christ would welcome them and wants us to do the same. Where we also are able to make sure that each one of us in our own families show encouragement and forgiveness and compassion to those who are near to us and especially to look out for the young who so easily give in to discouragement when they fail, to let them know that their fails or failures are not the end of the day. I've often told the story of a farm family in Iowa, three sons, the parents worked the farm, and when the boys were teenagers, the father died in an accident on the farm. The mother was thinking of selling the farm, and the boys convinced her that they could try to make a living out of it. And so they worked hard that fall. They planted the winter wheat. And the next spring, the wheat came, came up. And they were so happy because they knew they were going to have a great crop. And they were going to be able to save the farm. 
But one night, there was a great storm. Hail came, decimated the entire crop. And so they're out there in the field, sitting amidst all these hailstones. And the mother sees how dejected they are. And all she says to them, okay, boys, pick up those hailstones. We're going to make ice cream for the neighbors. <laughs> what she did was to let them know that that destruction was not the end. That their failure was not going to define who they were. We need to do that for one another as we offer forgiveness, as we show compassion, as we're generous to those who are in need. That their failures, their hardships, do not define who they are. And so tonight, let this gospel text of Christ risen from the dead explode in our lives so that we will see that this is a day of new creation and the past is prologue and we can begin again and that death does not have power over us but we can be generous because we live for all eternity but also that we are willing to go out into the world because tonight we held a candle burning brightly to reminding us that Christ wants us to go into the world, to be a light to the world as he is, so that the world will know that death and darkness do not have the last word, but that Christ truly is risen from the dead. At this time, I invite our elect to please come forward for baptism. Andrew Benjamin, Michael Benning, Jacob Singano, Jennifer Lackey, Sarah Manley, Max Malik, Brooke Morgan, Tiana Pigford, Cole Sinkford, Eliana Salvaggio, Martel Walker, Anastasia Watson, Elijah Manuel Willoughby, Charisma Wills, Evan Wolf, and Crystal Wu. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these our brothers and sisters in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Benedict. 
Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John Vianney, Saint Teresa of Jesus, Saint Samuel, Saint John Henry Newman, Saint Luke, Saint Sebastian. Maximilian, Saint Elizabeth and Seton, Saint May, Saint Catherine, Saint Mother Mary Elizabeth Lange, Saint Mother Teresa, Saint Elijah. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love, and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people to be baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along the flood. And after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the font of baptism, May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old 
may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of the font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism through death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. My dear elect, profess now the faith to which you are about to be baptized. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you <clears throat> renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And finally, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting?
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Would the following candidates please come forward for reception into the full communion of the Catholic Church? Cameron Collier, Anthony Contreras, Jack Hennessy, Abby Landini, Cornell Nice, Adlin Pesmino, Connor Phillips, Colin Van Kuyk, and David Zimmerman.
My dear friends, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so I now invite you with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to confess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. So please repeat each line after me. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. My dear friends, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. My dear friends, you have become a new creation and you have clothed yourself in Christ. And so receive the baptismal garment that you are wearing. Bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. And as the godparents now give you the light of Christ, I invite you to understand that you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light. Keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Please give them the candles, sponsors. Cardinal, we now are pleased to present to you all of our candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. My dear friends, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon the apostles at Pentecost. 
and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, his death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. I ask now the community to stand and pray with me to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation and strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and you gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
My dear friends, with great joy, I now present these newly baptized, received, and confirmed believers to you. I ask you now to show them a sign of your welcome, your love, and your support. and remain standing. Easter is the first day of a new creation, and so with hope that Christ never abandons us, we offer these prayers. That the church, in proclaiming the triumph of Jesus over death, may always be a sign of hope to a world that too often despairs that nothing makes sense. We pray to the Lord. For peace among nations, that the risen Lord may inspire world leaders to work for peace and promote justice and human solidarity, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the newly baptized and the newly initiated into the church, that they may know of our support as they take their place at the Lord's table and join us in proclaiming the good news to the ends of the earth, we pray to the Lord. For all who are away from home this Easter, particularly members of the military and relief workers, that God will protect them from harm, guide their service, and bring them home safely, we pray to the Lord. For all who are burdened by sickness, disease, or chronic illness, that the healing spirit of the risen Christ may bring them comfort and make them whole, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, they too might live in newness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Father of the risen Lord, inspire us with new hope about our lives on this day of a new creation, so that we may take up with fresh energy the mission of bringing about the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, even the heavenly powers. With the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order bishops, the clergy, the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now extend to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We welcome to the Eucharistic table of the Lord those who will receive the Eucharist for the first time.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those that you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and one in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone here at the cathedral for those uh, who were involved in preparing the catechumens and, cate uh, and candidates for reception of the initiation sacraments today. They worked so very hard and walked and accompanied them uh, in a way that I think built some really wonderful friendships. But also, as we have celebrated Holy Week here, uh, we have done that uh, to, uh, because of the hard work of all those who are involved in the art and, and environment uh, committee here at the cathedral. Uh, the cathedral looks really wonderful. It's because of their hard work. Uh, to David Jonies and all of those who are part of the music ministry, our choir uh, musicians, uh, we're so very grateful. And uh, also under the watchful and careful eye of Father Andy uh, Medijevic, who uh, has uh, been the MC for all of these ceremonies and uh, done uh, such a wonderful job in organizing everything. So thanks to all of you for your wonderful work that you've done. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.